Good evening, and welcome to the parlor of prestidigitation here at the world-famous Magic Castle. Tonight's performance of Mark James Presents Curious Mysteries will begin in just a few moments. Before we begin, we would like eight people to sign a playing card of your choosing. So right now, we would like eight people to step up momentarily from their seat. Select any playing card you like out of the clear plastic tray. Choose your favorite color Sharpie. Sign the face of your card. Return the Sharpie to the pin stand, and please lean your signed card up against the pin stand. Did you say sleight of hand? It's my favorite part. Sleight of hand, my favorite type of magic. But here's the thing about sleight of hand. How can you ever be sure that you've actually seen it? Because it should be invisible. And it's only one of the many tools that magicians use to accomplish their magic. There's timing, misdirection, there's choreography, there's good scripting. If you see illusions, the way that they're built fools both the eye and the mind. Sleight of hand is just one of the many tools that weaves together with everything else to make a good magic trick. Well, this next trick is accomplished entirely with sleight of hand. You have those eight cards I asked you to look after, please, my friend. They went in the top pocket, right next to your heart. And they are, as expected, slightly warm. Okay. Yeah. Pretty good. All right. Now, uh, all of these cards are signed by you, but not all of you signed a card. So for the benefit of those who did not, let's have them identified. If you see your card or hear your name, please just shout, that's me, and we'll know that a real person signed it, and then I didn't fake any of these. We have a queen of clubs with S-R-H-A on the front. Or is that your card? Yeah. Did you say that's me? Yeah, it's, it's M. It's M? Yeah. Oh, S-R-M-A. Yeah. Oh, that's my fault, is it, that I can't read your writing? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's my card, but you know what? He didn't say it perfectly. It was my squiggle, so I'm just going to whisper that that might be me. <laughs> I'm going to give you another chance, though. It's okay. A queen of clubs with S-R-M-A on the front. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> a nine of hearts with a squiggle that I cannot read. That is mine, it's Norma. Okay, good. Thanks, Norma. I appreciate you. That is mine. Look at this. We're ad living today. over <laughs> groundlings <laughs> instead of the magic castle. I'm going to roll with it. Uh, a king of hearts with Warren. That's me. Nice work. <laughs> Warren's going to walk straight into some detective show, lead part, that's what <laughs> uh, We have uh, possibly a Daniela or Daniela's Ace of Hearts. That's me. Nice work. Which one is it? Daniela. Thank you, Daniela. We have a ten of diamonds with Zoe. Yep. Hey. Thank you, Zoe. Zoe drew a little smiley face, too. Aww. Aww. Positive vibes. All right. We have a jack of clubs, Cora. <laughs> What are your police cars here? The show started. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Cindy's Four of Diamonds. In the house. Yes, Cindy, come on, let's do it. In the house. Someone else in this room right now knows that this is their card. Because they know that they signed one and they haven't yet had it shouted out. And they are desperately trying to think of something great to say. <laughs> Eight of Diamonds cannot read the name. That's me. Very nice, my friend. <laughs> Understated, perfect. Very Daniel Day-Lewis of you, that one. Good performance. So what we have here is eight cards signed by all of you, and you know that I cannot duplicate them. They are indeed your signatures. As well as those eight cards, we are also going to use this, my empty right pocket, and this, my empty left pocket. This reminds me of when I was a kid. There was a guy in our neighborhood whose elephant impression started just like that. <laughs> away somewhere. I'm not exactly sure what happened. <laughs> what we have here is eight cards signed by you, one magician, two hands, and hopefully a pretty fun trick. Let's do this. The idea is to make these cards one at a time, vanish from here, fly through the air invisibly, and land in one of my two pockets. I won't tell you which one ahead of time, because that is the only advantage that I have, but that aside, the cards will begin to go now, because good sleight of hand should ideally be invisible, as I mentioned at the beginning. That's why the first card has already made its way. This previously empty pocket is now holding a Queen of Clubs with S-R-M-A on the front right at the back there is number one. Thank you so much. All right, good sleight of hand should also ideally be instantly repeatable. That's why a second card just made its way to my pocket. And that, friends, is a nine of hearts signed with the blue. Whose was this card? That was yours. Thank you so much. It was Norma. Thank you, sir. 
Okay, now you should also know that sleight of hand is not always met with unanimous applause. <laughs> <laughs> I still have one, two, three, four, five, six cards remaining. Watch very closely. Six cards remaining. And the next one jumps just like that. Ah, remember I said that sometimes they went to the other pocket, which is what? Oh. oh, sometimes I just miss all together. This is the eight of diamonds. <laughs> Who's is this one? That's me. enjoy that, my friends. Just help me out and don't drop it at a crime scene, okay? Those five cards will now ideally become four, and if they become four, that means that this pocket I pulled out empty just a second ago should now be playing home to a card, and that is Warren's King of Hearts. Where is Warren? Right Thank you so much. Would you mind passing that back? Excellent stuff. Okay, we have four cards left. Four cards left. Let's see if we can do this. We'll wedge one of these in between. Uh, and this one is uh, Daniela. Daniela, did you pick the Ace of Hearts randomly, or was it on purpose that's your favorite card or anything? It was just one that I liked. Okay, watch this as it vanishes then. That Ace of Hearts goes immediately from between these and then it's right down. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, wow. yeah. Now it's starting to get really, really tricky because I only have three cards left and they're going to immediately turn to two. And if that becomes two, that means one jumped over here and that, my friends, is Cindy's Four of Diamonds. Where is Cindy? Where is Cindy? All right, this is going to get really, really tough because we've only got a couple of cards left. So give me a shout, Cora. Yep. And Zoe? Yeah. Okay, Zoe, as you're the closest, I'm going to ask you, which card would you like to go next? The Ten of Diamonds, your card is going to go next. All right, watch very closely. Two cards left, and I only have two hands, which really makes this trick quite a bit more difficult for reasons that I cannot explain, but it's getting tough. So here we go. Two cards, two hands, and the Ten of Diamonds just went. There is now only one card remaining. The Ten of Diamonds is gone, and down inside of my... <laughs> oh, that's... I made a mistake? Yep. Which card is this? Ten of Diamonds. Oh, the Ten of Diamonds is supposed to be in my pocket. That's why this is now the Jack of Clubs. I too have a Jack of Clubs left. There are loads of ways to make it look like a card has vanished, turned invisible using various forms of sleight of hand. That is one, here is another. By the way, this is something you would be able to learn too if you were willing to have no friends as a child. <laughs> It's not an easy path, but I walked it. All right, all right. Uh, let's see if we can do this. Mary, I think I'm going to need some help from this one. What is next on our list that could help me with Cora's card? Real magic. Real magic. Okay, oh. Cora, are you a fan of movies about magic or anything like that? Yes. You are, okay. Do you ever use magic words in your real everyday life? Sometimes. Okay, you should be very comfortable with this then. I have a cheat sheet of my five favorite magic words. They are Abracadabra, Hocus Pocus, Alakazam, Wingardium, Leviosa, <laughs> and Open Sesame, which you all use to get in here. So, Cora, which one would you like to use? Wingardium Leviosa. Gosh, I hoped you would say that. <laughs> Let's do it then all at the same time on three, one, two, three. Wingardium Leviosa. I perfectly like that. The card flies invisibly. But to where? Does it go? Crotch. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not in either of these, so let's take a look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, nothing but disappointment in that. <laughs> I mean that I don't have the card. <laughs> Don't write me off. <laughs> uh, we have a problem. We have a missing card, which does not appear like it's going to come back. So, Mary, what's next on the list? Mystery. mystery. <laughs> a detective mystery, to be exact. I'm not going to be able to find that card, but I think I know a man who can. <laughs> it's going to be like one of those old detective shows. The name is Dobson, Detective Dobson. I was in my office one night thinking about the strangest day, the strangest case that I had ever had. The case of a missing playing card. I'd woken early that morning and it felt like dawn, but I was wrong. It was Susan. <laughs> I looked around the room, the curtains were drawn, but the rest of the furniture was real. I just want you to know this is not about to get better. <laughs> 
there was a horse's head on the pillow and the light was on, which is very strange. I don't normally sleep with a light on. <laughs> and who would? I mean, oh, actually, light sleepers, light sleepers sleep with a light on. I'm a hard sleeper, so I work out what I <laughs> At that point, a woman burst into the room. She opened the door in her pyjamas. I thought that was a strange place to have a door. <laughs> she thanked me for a wonderful night. She told me I was the most well-endowed man she'd ever met. I think she was pulling my leg. <laughs> she asked me to meet her at the bar that night, so I agreed and she left. It was a sleeping pill on the side cabinet. I woke it up. <laughs> <laughs> Later that night I headed down to the bar and in she came. She looked beautiful in a red dress. Oh, I did notice this kind of embarrassing mole on her shoulder as he was jumping up and swinging from her earrings. Oh. <laughs> she also had a glass eye, but she didn't tell me. It just came out in conversation. Oh. We were on a roll. Oh. I said, what do you want to drink? She said, champagne, I guess. I said, guess again. <laughs> we ordered whiskey on the rocks with real ice, none of that frozen stuff. When she reached into a purse and took out a wallet, I recognized it instantly as belonging to me. Apparently taken accidentally from my apartment earlier that day. Before I had time to ask further questions, she took out a small silver case and from inside removed a single cigarette. As she put the case away, I spotted an engraving and realized it was most likely a gift. Three of the most beautiful words you can ever hear. Made in China. <laughs> Being a non-smoker myself, I thought I'd impress her with some sleight of hand, or as they say in France, le jar de moi, the quickness of the fingers. Je n'ai parlé par très bien français. I broke the cigarette in half, and I immediately rubbed the edges against my elbows to get just enough friction to put it back together. Then thought, why bother? I don't even smoke. <laughs> She was having one and she asked me for a lighter, so I offered it to her. She looked surprised. I'd gotten too close and taken off her eyebrows. I said, do you want to see a really big trick? She slapped me in the face and left. <laughs> Turned out she hadn't heard me properly. I felt alone. I asked the barman to call me a cab. He avoided the obvious joke and outside I went away. Outside the cab pulled up with a jerk, but the jerk got out. So I got in. Took me back to the office where a lady was waiting for me whose name was Cora. Cora asked me if I was on a case. Are you on a case? No, I'm really this tall. Uh, <laughs> Cora said, have you got any leads? Have you got any leads? I haven't even got a dog. <laughs> then I remembered the one unchecked piece of evidence from earlier in the story. The wallet handed back to me by a mysterious stranger. As I looked inside, I spotted nothing unusual. A few dollars, a Costco membership card. <laughs> and then I saw it. Sticking out from the side of the wallet, a small envelope. Something that had not been in there previously and clearly left behind. As I held the envelope up to the light, it appeared that something was nestled inside. I decided to have the envelope checked. Would you mind checking please that that envelope is truly sealed? There's even a small legal sticker on there which stops you opening the flap. Yeah, it's sealed. It appears that it is sealed. Very good. Thank you so much. What is finally on the list, uh, Mary? An impossible ending. An impossible ending. I tore open the envelope and was greeted by the sounds of gasps from the audience. They gasped twice. I spotted a playing card. The best thing about it was, it was a signed Jack of Clubs with Cora's name oh. right across it.